Hello, listeners. Well, I didn't expect to be recording this right now, this evening. It is Thursday, the 8th of September. It's about 8.45pm my time here in Paris, where I am. That's about 7.45pm in the UK. And um, so, yes, I didn't expect to be doing this, but here I am doing it. I, I just felt like I had to quickly do a podcast episode and publish it as soon as possible just to talk about this because um, I suppose you've seen the news. I don't know if you have. I don't know if you've seen the news. Maybe you're getting the news from this, uh, but it's a significant one. Big news story and a significant thing for the United Kingdom, for British people and for many other people around the world, including other countries such as Australia, New Zealand, Canada, uh, members of the uh, Commonwealth, and probably just people all around the world who um, you know, can see the significance of this. So the news is that the Queen has died. Queen Elizabeth II has died. She was, was she 96 years old? And she died uh, at the end of the afternoon or during the afternoon today. And so uh, I thought that I really should immediately do a podcast episode talking about this and share my thoughts. I know that some people are wondering how I'm feeling about it and stuff. I'm going to talk about it all. I'm going to have a kind of ramble because I'm not completely prepared. It's not like I've... I mean, you know, I think we knew that this was going to happen fairly soon because obviously the Queen was 96. Uh, I hope I'm right in saying that. Was she 96? Yeah, 96. Queen was 96 years old, and we'd known for some time that she wasn't in the best of health, and that, for example, she'd had to cancel various engagements and public appearances and stuff, and obviously she lost uh, her husband, Prince Philip, um, last year, and uh, that must have been a big blow for her. So it doesn't come as a big surprise, you know. She'd had a long life, and she wasn't very well. So I suppose I could have prepared for this, but um, nevertheless, I didn't really. But um, so I got the news earlier on. I was sitting down uh, having dinner with my wife and my daughter, and we were actually talking about the Queen because this afternoon there were some stories going around, you know, the way that the news goes around on the internet. You just get notifications on your phone from whatever news outlet that you subscribe to or um, in my case, I go on Twitter and I just sort of see what's going on there. I think maybe someone sent me a message as well. I had a bit of a chat with Amber and Paul as well and other other friends and stuff. And um, so the messages were coming through that basically the Queen was under medical supervision, which I suppose means that doctors were closely um, observing her and that she was in bed and that uh, doctors were you know, very concerned about her health, so much so that members of her family were travelling to be b- beside her, to be at her bedside. And that includes you know, William and Harry and other members of the family uh, were travelling to, to Balmoral in Scotland, which is where she was when she died. Balmoral is what was one of her. This is going to be this is going to be weird speaking about her because I'll be. It's, it feels unnatural to talk about her in the past tense. That's going to be confusing. Uh, but Balmoral was, or let's say it is one of the, um, uh, the, the monarch's properties. It was one of the Queen's uh, properties. Buckingham Palace, obviously in London. Windsor Castle, just outside London. Sandringham in uh, East Anglia. And Balmoral Castle in Scotland. That's actually where she was when she died. So members of her family were travelling there. So we, you know, we kind of got, um, we got an impression that something was up. And so, you know, lots of people were speculating about it and thinking, oh dear, what does this mean? And um, the newsreader on BBC News this afternoon was wearing a black tie, which is what, um, you know, they they have to do on the BBC if they are about to give the news of uh, the death of a member of the royal family. It's it's, um, sort of protocol to wear a black tie and to adopt certain 
other sort of types of behaviour and and so on. Like the the protocol comes in. So the news reader was wearing a black tie. This is before the news broke. So everyone was going, uh oh, what's going on? Does this mean that the Queen is? And so we were talking about it. My wife, my daughter, and me. Well, my 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 wife and I really. Um, my daughter was just like I don't know talking about unicorns or something, which is what she normally does. Uh, but then in the middle of our dinner, yeah, I noticed a notification arrive on my phone, and uh, sure enough, the news was that the Queen had died. Um, and you know, I saw I just went oh like that, and my wife said, "What? What is it? What? What? What?" And obviously this brought this got my daughter's attention as well because you know if you've got kids you'll know that they are always listening even when they're wittering away about unicorns they're still kind of paying attention so my daughter was like what is it what is it what is it and I was like oh god how am I going to say this and I said to you know I had to break it my wife knew what it was but I had to then tell my daughter and I sort of said okay um you know the queen right you know she was very old wasn't she very old. She had a very long life, and she also had, yeah, she she was actually very sick as well. And and my daughter was like, uh huh. And I said, yeah. And so, um, well, the news is that the queen has died. Now, I don't think my four and a half year old daughter is fully aware of the significance of that, but she knows kind of, or she, yeah, she knows who the queen was or is. She knew who the queen anyway. Um, so, but then in my mind, I was thinking, oh dear, do I need to try and moderate this, this information now in order to reduce the impact? I don't know. And I said, so I sort of said to her, but it's okay. You know, it's okay because first of all, she had an amazing life. She had a very long life and she had a very amazing life, like a really incredible life. And secondly, uh, now that the queen is dead, we now have a king. Um, because that's how it works. You know, when, when, uh, the king dies, the king is replaced or when the queen dies, the queen is replaced by a new queen or king. In fact, now we have a king and a queen because the new king, that's the queen's son, Charles, his wife is also, they are, they are king and queen together. So that this is true listeners. It is a case of the queen is dead. Long live the king. Because now we have King Charles the Third, if indeed if indeed that is the name that he chooses to to use as the monarch, he hasn't actually had the um, he hasn't been crowned yet in the coronation ceremony, but the rules of all this dictate that he instantly has become king. This is strange. So anyway, that's how I got the news. And and I sort of said to my wife, look, I'm going to have to go and record something about this, aren't I? And she said, yeah, of course, go ahead. So here I am, listeners, in the office. So, I mean, I, I just want to talk about this. I think you got the idea, right? I just want to talk about it and try to... Um, the, the idea is I'm just going to try and put into words my personal thoughts and feelings about this and then attempt to describe the significance of this because this is a hugely significant moment it is i mean obviously if you're not british and if you're not from a country that has ties uh to the royal family you know if you're not from a country that's part of the commonwealth or that used to be part of the commonwealth or, or whatever then you know that it might not be so significant to you but obviously this is Luke's English podcast, and I talk about British things. And the Queen, you know, it doesn't get much more British than that, does it? Uh, and so, yeah, that's the idea. I think I've, I need to try and put into words why this is significant. And so, you might be thinking, how do you feel, Luke? Well, let me try. Let me start with that. I'll try and talk about how I actually feel. It's a strange feeling, of course, because as you may know, as you probably know, if you've I mean, uh, uh, unless you're very young or something or just lucky or whatever, but uh, when you lose someone or when someone dies, um, someone that you know, I mean, not that I knew the Queen personally, of course. It's not like um, it's a, a close member of my family or a friend or something. It would be different in that case. But when, you know, someone dies that you that you knew, and I think all of us, especially British people, have 
a close connection to the Queen, how can we not? Even if that is a negative connection, because for many people... They weren't, they, you know, they were never fans of the Queen. They're not fans of the royal family or the entire system. You know, there's plenty of people who disagree with the system. But, you know, even if you disagree with it, you're, you can't, you know, everyone has a close connection to, to it. Um, right. So um, there's that strange feeling that when someone that you know has died, it's, it's weird. It's like we don't really know as humans how to deal with that, I think. I really think so. I think the human beings just can't really deal with this information, which is that someone who was there is now not there. And we kind of think, where are they? This is strange. Where have they gone? And also that what keeps coming back to you in a, in situations like this is, wow, I can't believe she's gone. She's not here anymore. And you keep kind of re-realizing this thing. It's a sort of stays with you and your mind just keeps coming back to the same fact and coming it's like a goldfish going around a goldfish bowl so you know the you know what they say goldfish a goldfish has got like a 10 second memory or something i don't know if this is true but and the goldfish swims around and you imagine that by the time it gets back to the to the place where it started from it's forgotten so it's just it's kind of like it it realizes it's in a goldfish bowl and then, and oh my God, I'm stuck in a goldfish bowl. And then it swims and then it forgets and just carries on swimming. And then it realizes again, oh my God, I'm in a goldfish bowl. It's kind of a bit like that. Not that I feel like a goldfish in a goldfish bowl. This is a strange analogy, uh, but more just that you kind of think, oh God, my goodness, the queen has died. <gasps> wow. And then you kind of do something like, you know, um, finish your dinner or uh, whatever, like get your bag ready, put your shoes on and then walk down the street. And then just, just now I was walking down the street again and then I looked up at the sky <laughs> um, and just thought, oh my God, the Queen's dead. And then um, kind of got into the building here and started climbing the stairs, got up to the top, like, oh, these stairs are hard work. Oh my God, the Queen's died. You know, kind of like that goldfish going around the goldfish bowl. So it's difficult to to actually comprehend it because I just think human beings aren't really able to deal with the fact that, that those moments when a person has gone and we just we don't understand that we can't our minds are not able to to just deal with that so it's a very strange feeling as you probably know but also there's that sense of the significance of this moment and I I it's a bit like an earthquake has happened I mean I'm not in the epicenter of the earthquake that would be obviously in, in Britain, right? I don't know exactly where that would be, but certainly in the heart of the UK right now, that's the epicentre of the earthquake. And that's sent shockwaves throughout the country and beyond. And, you know, I can kind of, I feel like I can feel that sense of shock. And I just know that that this will be affecting many, many thousands of people, or of course, shockwaves. The UK at this point will be sort of reeling from this news. Everyone will be glued to the TV, the internet. Everyone will be pretty shocked. This will be the only thing people are thinking about and talking about, I, I guess. It's probably like, you know, it won't be everyone. There'll be some people playing computer games online, trying to shoot each other and stuff, who don't give a shit about this at all. You know, there'll, there'll be other people doing other things who just, you know, it's just they're not bothered. Uh, but to a large extent, this is going to be uh, felt by many people. Um, plenty of people, as I've said, plenty of people don't agree with the monarchy, but there's no denying the fact that this is a profoundly historic moment. There's no escaping the significance of this, I think. Um, this is this is tremendously significant as a landmark in history. If you kind of look at things um, from a distance, if you take some distance and just kind of look at this as if we're looking back in history at this period, I think history books will include this date. And as I've said, this is a landmark in history. This is symbolic. And it's symbolic because it's the end of an era. Okay, I think that's probably... I should probably write that in the uh, title of this episode or the subtitle of this episode. The end, the end of an era. It's the end of an era. What do I mean by an era? 
Um, it's a, an era is like a, a, a big, significant period of history, right? Um, a period of history, long period of time, um, a significant period in history. That's what we mean by an era. So we have things like the, uh, the Victorian era, the Edwardian era, the Georgian era. OK, I don't know what they're going to be calling this era, these 70 years that we've had. Will it be the second Elizabethan era, the second Elizabethan period? I'm not sure exactly what the name of it will be. Um, but um, this date, this is the end of that era. OK, um, and um, so that is that that's that's certainly significant. And it kind of is a dividing line between a certain period in the past and a new period, which we are now starting. So let's just kind of let's go into the facts a little bit. What's actually happened? Let me read from um, an article on Reuters.com which is a well-known news agency, Reuters. This is where lots of other news agencies get their information. Um, the, uh, Queen Elizabeth dies at 96, ending an era for Britain by Michael Holden and Russell Shane. Um, this was published uh, just, a f just a few minutes ago. So Balmoral, Scotland, September the 8th. Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest reigning monarch, the nation's figurehead and a towering presence on the world stage for seven decades. Seven decades. Seven decades. The longest reigning uh, monarch in this country and surely one of the longest reigning monarchs that we've ever had in the world. I don't know who has reigned longer than that. There might be someone somewhere, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely significant. Seven decades. It's extraordinary. Uh, so Queen Elizabeth died peacefully at her home in Scotland on Thursday. That's today. Aged 96. Peacefully. I mean, that's good, isn't it? Um, you can't ask for more than that. We don't know, of course. We really, we just trust what we're told here by these news agencies. Or this is the information that's come from, um, from Buckingham Palace, you know, from the royal family this is what they've told us we don't know of course but uh, still um it's not as if she died in an accident or in extreme circumstances and you can't ask for much more than that really can you at the end i suppose so you know yeah that's that's sort of that's kind of good and she had a good innings as we say in english um so charles there's a quote from prince charles or king charles now king charles the third Wow. Uh, the death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family, the new king, her eldest son, Charles, said. So obviously the family will be deeply um, upset and sad at this time. They'll be mourning the loss of their mother, their grandmother, their auntie, sis uh, sister, no. Um, her, her sister died years ago um, but um, they'll be obviously mourning her loss for me personally I mean as I, I said that I had a, I felt like I had some kind of personal connection just because you know I am a subject of the queen and all that um, but um, I mean it's for me it's I don't have that kind of um, grief I don't feel sad like I'm going to cry. I feel the weight of history in the moment, but I don't feel upset. It's, you know, I'd feel I'd feel a lot more upset if it was like a beetle or something like that, you know. I think that would I would be a bit more emotional in that uh, case. But who knows, maybe if I when I watch the funeral on television, whenever that's going to happen, uh, I don't know, or when I watch more coverage of this or when I talk about this, maybe I will get emotional, but I don't feel emotional really at this moment. Maybe it's just because I'm still digesting my dinner. You know, <laughs> when when I've digested dinner, then my body will be like, okay, we've done we've done dinner now. Hmm. Oh, okay, let's get emotional. You know, my, my my body doesn't multitask. It's just like one job at a time, please deal with dinner, record this podcast, then we'll deal with your feelings. I don't I don't know. I don't think so, but. Um, 
there's more there's more um uh, we we mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms and the Commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. The 73 year old said in a statement. That's Charles's statement there. Um, yeah, it's. I mean. I mentioned people who don't really care about the monarchy, but there are many people who really care and really love the Queen. And a lot of people are going to be really sad and really upset. And in fact, I mean, I've talked about this on the podcast before of what will happen in Britain um, when the Queen dies. Uh, So what will be happening now and what's going to happen? I would not be surprised if many people just take the day off tomorrow. Um, you know, I think so. I don't think many things will get done. For, not not everyone, but a lot of people will be really affected by this. The country will kind of stop. A lot of things will be very serious for a while. And um, BBC will change its programming and it's going to remove all sort of comedy and light entertainment programs probably from its schedule uh, over the next week or so. So everything, it'll be a, a, a period of national mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. That's the period in which you feel sad after someone has died. So there's no doubt that there will be a significant um, period of grief, national grief, as the country comes to terms with it. And, you know, you'll just you'll just see that in everything, in the conversations that people are having, in the stuff that people are sharing on social media. Just the conversation will only be about that. And um, it's going to be quite sombre and people will be paying their respects. I wonder what I wonder what the scenes will be like at Buckingham Palace and places like that. I mean, do you? Re- I don't know if you remember or if you ever saw or if you have seen what happened when Diana died, which was in a much more shocking and tragic way. Uh, but when Diana died, many flowers were brought to the gates of Buckingham Palace and laid on the ground, and there were hundreds, thousands of bunches of flowers and a huge outpouring of grief from many people. Um, surely it's going to be something like that. Surely. I think we might see some extraordinary things on TV and on the internet. There might be some extraordinary images of, you know, people paying their respects and sort of displays of public grief and mourning. Um, You know, remember, I'm recording this an hour after I got the news and I haven't been online I've shared a few messages and stuff with people who've been texting me and things like that, but I haven't really gone online and absorbed everything that's going on. Okay, so, um, so yeah, I mean, there's probably all sorts of stuff going on. People People publishing messages, there'll be all the big public figures will be um, sending their messages out. You know, everyone will just be talking about this. I mean... Yeah, it's it's going to be um, a really big thing. Um, the The article on Reuters continues. Buckingham Palace said Charles and his wife Camilla, the Queen Consort, that's her title. She's technically Queen Consort. Now I know these rules are basically made up. Um, I don't mean to sound glib or anything, um, but uh, so she does have the name Queen in her title, uh, Camilla. She's the queen consort. Consort, essentially, essentially, this just means someone who who accompanies the the, the the main monarch. Okay, so she she does have queen in her title. So she is technically queen, although actually queen consort, which means that the the person who's with the king, you know. Um. So Charles and Camilla, uh, will remain at. Balmoral Castle, where the Queen died before returning to London on Friday. That's tomorrow. On Queen Elizabeth's death, Charles automatically becomes King of the United Kingdom and the head of state of 14 other realms, including Australia, Canada and New Zealand. His office confirmed we would uh, he would be known as Charles III. Oh, OK. So he will be Charles III, which is... 
I suppose quite interesting. I mean, there was talk of him maybe choosing another name because sometimes kings do that in uh, the UK. Uh, they don't necessarily go with their first name. They they choose another name. Like, for example, George the... Um, is it George the... George the Sixth. Yeah, his his name was actually not George. Bertie. People called him Bertie. What's that short for? Anyway, uh, his name wasn't George, uh, but he decided to use the name George because that was the name of the previous king. But uh, Charles is going with Charles. Okay, then. It, this is interesting. Some people say that Charles is an unlucky name because the previous two Charleses we had, well, they're... Their time was pretty dramatic and quite negative. Charles I got got uh, beheaded during the revolution. We had a sort of revolution. I've talked about it before. Oliver Cromwell and all that. And then Charles II was reinstated. That's when the monarchy was reinstated again. But uh, during his time, there was civil war and, and so on. So those names, the, the name Charles is not necessarily associated with... Um, periods of calm peace and uh success i don't know really tumultuous periods in history during the two previous charleses but anyway i mean you know we don't know the future is unwritten so hopefully this one will be different but uh, we'll see it's going to be difficult for charles queen elizabeth ii that's a tough act to follow you could say and he i think he's probably entering an era for britain that could be complicated um, I don't mean to get into politics and all that stuff. I probably won't. It's not the time to do that. But certainly things are looking very complex indeed for the, for the United Kingdom. We have, you know, economic crisis, energy crisis, um, divisions and other things going on. But maybe, um, you know, maybe, th maybe things will improve. We'll see. So, uh, those are the facts. So anyway, the second Elizabethan era, what will it be known for? This is hard. This is difficult because I'm not like a historian and it's difficult to explain all these things, but I'll try to put it into words. So what will what will the Elizabethan era be known for? Many things, but certainly one of those things is the waning of Britain's power on the world stage, the reducing or the weakening of Britain's power and influence. Because when the Queen came to the throne, Britain was much more powerful and dominant in the world. Now, it wasn't as powerful and dominant as it had been before World War II, because World War II totally changed everything, of course. But the period in which, after World War II, the empire, the British Empire, kind of collapsed like a flan in a cupboard, to quote Eddie Izzard, not to be glib, but certainly at the beginning of the century, that's the 20th century, Britain had power and influence around the globe in a major way. The British Empire was, you know, at its peak at the beginning of the 20th century. The sun never set on the British Empire, as they say. One of the major things that happened during the Queen's reign from the early 1950s until... 70 years later, now in 2022, one of the major things that happened in that period is that Britain's place in the world changed. Now, I don't intend to say that the empire was a good thing or that the collapse of the empire was a good thing either. It's, it's complicated like everything. I'm not here going, oh, it's sad that the empire reduced. You know, you could equally argue that that's a good thing because colonialism and all the complications and problems relating to that. So, but anyway, I don't mean to say it's good or bad. It's just, this is, the, this is what happened, right? So the fact is that after World War II and largely during Elizabeth II's reign, the British Empire shrank and its influence diminished. That's not because of her, right? Some people might be thinking, what, that's her responsibility. No, that's really nothing to do with her. And maybe one of the reasons that the Queen is so loved and respected is that she maintained like a stability and a sense of dignity and a sense of hard work and a sense of family values and also a sense of um, service to her country. Because, I mean, you know, I know she's the Queen, she lives in very rich surroundings and she's wealthy, but she 
did work very hard for the country. Um, it must be it must be hard, you know. As well as being comfortable and opulent, it must be also very hard work. And she really embodied that sort of sense of service. Again, if you agree with the system, if you agree with the if, with the system, but you know, regardless of whether you agree with it or not, you it, it's 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 impossible to escape the fact that it's significant. So yeah, Britain's uh, empire shrank; its influence diminished. At least its influence changed, but Britain was was not dominant in the way that it had been before. There are good and bad things in that. There's a lot more to it and more more things to say. It's not just about empire and all that. During her reign, many many good things, many positive things happened. Many other types of change changes in society very profound changes occurred during her time and um as i said it's the end of an era and if we think of this in terms of the sweep of history punctuation is important just like in writing and the the, the queen has always been a symbol and her death is symbolic too because it's sort of punctuates period this period of history um you know, the Queen's era, this represents a dividing line. The Queen's death here is a dividing line, and we are now on the other side of that line, and you could now define this new chapter in history as a distinctly different chapter to the one which preceded it. So that's why this is an important day, and this is an important moment. Not just a sad moment for all those reasons, but also incredibly significant. What will this new era be like for Britain? Perhaps another thing is that this, that perhaps the main role of the monarch, the queen and now the king, is to be a human connection, a sort of human link to Britain's past. She's a symbol. I've said it before. You sh you sh most of you know that the queen didn't, you know, the monarch, the queen, now the king doesn't have that much executive power. They don't really decide what happens in the country. They can exert certain levels of influence. It's a bit sort of, uh, it's a bit vague, but the Queen never really, was never very heavy handed with the powers that she probably could have used if she wanted to. And again, that's another reason why she was successful is that she didn't interfere for better or worse, right? But the fact is she didn't. If she tried to exert more power or influence, it probably wouldn't have gone so well for her. But anyway, a human connection, a link to Britain's past, because we saw the Queen as the latest in a long line of monarchs stretching back into history. So she is literally a, the human embodiment of our history and our, and our um, heritage. Uh, a link between people because we're all her subjects, again, for better or worse. And in that regard, we are united in some respect. We're, we're united in the fact that, you know, we are all essentially royal subjects, like it or not. And also a link between nations in the Union and in the Commonwealth, again, for better or worse. Uh, but a, a figurehead, someone who represented the UK in a very recognisable way. On that point, I would like to ask you what you think, listeners. I mean, here I am rambling. I won't ramble for that much longer. I'm going to stick to an hour for this one. But I would like to now ask you for your comments and thoughts and opinions uh, from the outside. Or maybe from the inside too. Maybe you're from a country that has the Queen as, as uh, the head of state, or had the Queen as the head of state, or from a country that was, you know, a former colony of um, of Britain, um, or just a, you know, a third party, you know, if you're from a country that um, was never part of the British Empire in any way. Just from the outside, what? how do you see this? Um, how do you see the Queen uh, from your position? What's the significance in your mind so what did she what did she represent well she represented a certain stoicism a certain kind of quiet strength hard work family values stability and i think those are important values really 
Um, I don't quite know where I stand on uh, stand on it all. As I've said before, is the monarchy a force for good in this country or is it a leftover from a bygone era and just the embodiment of unfair privilege, inequality and a certain unfairness? I don't, I don't know really, but the pure human, cultural, political and constitutional drama of all of this is impossible to ignore. The impact of the Queen's death on the UK, the end of an era. Yeah, so at this very moment... Operation London Bridge will be underway. This is a a very carefully prepared plan for what to do when the Queen dies. And it involves at what point the public are informed. So obviously we've been informed now. And also preparations for uh, the funeral and for the coronation of Prince Charles and also protocols for the media and what the BBC are going to be doing. It's a a big thing sweeping across the nation. Again, I want to come back to this thing about the Queen's time on the throne during one of the most significant periods in the UK's history. Major changes. What will the history books say about the reign of Queen Elizabeth II? What significant moments and events have happened during her time? We've had major advances in technology which have completely changed society. And I think we're only at the beginning of that with the internet. Uh, Microchips, computers, the internet, they all came in during Queen Elizabeth II's reign. When she first became queen, people were just using telephones. That was it, really. And then maybe in the 60s, computers started to be more and more developed, but the computers were the size of a, of a room. And it was like a, the computer is the size of a room that could do kind of what a pocket calculator can do now, that sort of thing. And now, of course, you know, we've got, you know, Apple watches or other smart watches, tiny devices on our wrists that can do incredibly complicated um, types of processing. Um, humans landing on the moon, well, what else? I mean, it's mind-boggling, really. Globalization, the fact that the world is so much closer together now. We're all connected in so many ways that, um, compared to how we were before. Culture, so many cultural changes. Art, you know, music and art during the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s and beyond. The Beatles and everything that they represented, that all happened during the Queen's reign. Uh, politics, all of the global politics, the Cold War, the Kennedy assassination, the fall of the Soviet Union, um, the Vietnam War, 9-11. The Queen also was alive during World War II. She wasn't the Queen, but she was there in Buckingham Palace during World War II. So, I don't know. We feel the hand of history on our shoulders. Is that a, is that a quote from someone? The hand of history on my shoulder. I think, oh, that's Tony Blair. Oh, my God, that's a weird random quote. When Tony Blair became prime minister, he said, I feel the hand of history on my shoulder. But I kind of get what he knows. We understand what he means. Um, So there you go. I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, And I'm going to let my dinner digest properly. And and as we digest this news. But as I said before, I'm keen to know what you think. Okay, so for what it's worth, listeners, there are my thoughts. That's just what's in my brain on this particular evening when this news has arrived. The world's going to be a different place now, um, certainly from the British point of view. Um, You know, everyone's going to wake up tomorrow morning and rub their eyes and go, oh, my goodness, the world is different. Things have definitely changed. We're in, we, it's at the, the beginning of a new era. We've got a new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Don't get me started, listeners. Do not get me started on that. Um, wow. Considering the, the, the people that the Queen has met, how many Prime Ministers, how many Prime Ministers has she met? Because you know that... When someone becomes prime minister in the in the UK, they have to go and see the Queen, and the Queen goes, "Okay, you can be the prime minister, right?" And um, how many prime ministers? I'm trying to find that information. Fifteen, fifteen prime ministers. 
During her 70-year reign, this is WashingtonPost.com, during her 70-year reign, Queen Elizabeth II met with Prime Ministers for weekly private audiences. Prime Ministers talked to the monarch, knowing that their conversation would not be leaked, meaning that she would keep it um, to herself, confidential. She'd keep it confidential. Um at least by the Queen. Still, snippets from their meetings leak out in conversations, biographies and embarrassing hot mic moments. Uh, Who's leaking that information? Probably the Prime Ministers themselves. The Queen played an important constitutional role in the transition of power by inviting Prime Ministers to form a government. Her final Prime Minister was Liz Truss. So Liz Truss was actually the Queen's final royal engagement, the last thing, the last official duty that she did as... um, as the Queen was to um, was to grant Liz Truss the power to be the Prime Minister. I don't know, what did the Queen say? Was she like, right, that's it. <laughs> I'm out. Maybe. Liz Truss. Okay, this is it now for me. She's like, ah, oh, there you go. She, it took all her energy to do that. I don't mean to be glib about it. Anyway, her final Prime Minister was Liz Truss. Truss was the Queen's 15th Prime Minister. Her first was Winston Churchill. From Winston Churchill to Liz Truss. Winston Churchill was born in 1874. Isn't that extraordinary? Wow. Winston Churchill. I'm going to read through this. Elizabeth became Queen in 1952 and at just 25 years old. When she stepped off the plane from Kenya following the death of her father, Winston Churchill was waiting on the tarmac to greet her. Historians say Churchill, who was a great admirer of the Queen's father, initially thought Elizabeth was too inexperienced for the role, but they would become very fond of each other. Now, if you've watched The Queen, the TV series, then you will have seen this story sort of reenacted very well, I have to say. Churchill once remarked, all the film people in the world, if they had scoured the globe, could not have found anyone so suited to the part. The Queen sent him a handwritten letter after he retired, saying how much she would miss him and how no successor will ever be able to hold the place of my first Prime Minister. Second one, her second Prime Minister was Anthony Eden. The Queen's early meetings with Anthony Eden were dominated by the possible marriage of the Queen's sister, Princess Margaret, to Group Captain Peter Townsend, a divorcee, meaning it was complicated and could involve the state. In the end, Margaret decided not to marry Townsend. Eden was also the leader during the 1956 Suez Crisis. The Suez Crisis was basically a diplomatic crisis that, that represents a significant shift in terms of Britain's power and influence abroad. Um, uh, as I was saying, the diminish, the diminishing power of Britain on the world stage. That's what the Suez Crisis represents. It's in The Crown, Series 1, I think. There was much speculation at the time about how much he confided in the Queen about plans to reclaim the canal. Harold Macmillan was the third one. The Queen and her third Prime Minister did not initially hit it off, meaning they had a a pretty bad relationship at the beginning. They didn't get on. He was unsure whether the Prime Minister's annual visit to Balmoral was a social occasion, with talking shop relegated to the margins, or a Highlands version of his weekly audiences at Buckingham Palace, according to a government blog post. Huh? So basically, Harold Macmillan got the tone of the meetings wrong it seems. Uh, But the two were soon on the same wavelength and the Queen came to rely on his counsel. Okay, Alec Douglas Holm. Alec Douglas Holm's predecessor famously described him to the Queen as steel painted as wood. Not that he needed an introduction. He was a fellow Scottish landowner and a childhood friend of the Queen's mother. He helped the Queen name royal horses over the years. Okay, fair enough. Harold Wilson is the fifth one. Wilson was the Queen's fifth Uh, with the Queen's first Labour Prime Minister. At the outset, it seemed as if Wilson, a leader with socialist leanings, may not have much in common with the British... With the British? With the British uh, monarch, I think that's what that means. Uh, But the two, only a decade apart in age, got on famously. Um, Am I going to keep reading this? I'm not sure, but we get all the way through. Margaret Thatcher... 
of course, then John Major, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, David Cameron, Theresa May, Boris Johnson. <coughs> Excuse me. And finally, Liz Truss. What a weird turn of events. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I will leave it there. Actually, before I leave it there, and this is just me interrupting what I recorded about an hour ago. I've just been listening back to this just to check the recording. I just wanted to add this in before the end of the episode. Um, Yeah, I've just been thinking about how this is going to affect the podcast. I know this isn't about me at all, obviously, uh, but still, I thought that I should say this. I mean, I'm saying this at the end of the episode, and I'm sure a lot of people won't won't have got this far. But anyway, I'll say it. So uh, how is this going to affect the podcast? Now, actually, I, I've got a few episodes in the pipeline. And the next couple of episodes I was going to uh, publish, I don't know if I should publish them sort of immediately after and during this period. I don't really, I've, I think that it wouldn't really be appropriate to publish certain types of content, or at least it would be more appropriate to publish certain other things. So what I'm talking about is, so the next two episodes that I've prepared and that are due to be published over the next couple of weeks, like the next one, even before the Queen's funeral and the one after would be like the days after the Queen's funeral. So right in the middle of that sensitive period, um, the plan is uh, what I was going to do was upload these two episodes and the episodes are called 50 Random British Facts with James. And the idea is that we came up with 50 facts about Britain, but some of the facts are made up. They're just, they're false. So it's a kind of a true or false quiz. And so we read through these facts and you have to guess if they're true or false. And then we discuss the facts and tell you if they're true or false. So the true ones are true, and the false ones are completely made up. And some of those facts do um, contain references to the Queen and to the royal family and stuff. Um, And generally, the tone of those two episodes is quite jokey. There's quite a lot of silly humour and slightly ridiculous stuff. I mean, it's a mix of some serious and kind of interesting uh, facts and uh, bits of trivia, but also some bits of just straight straightforward humour. And I don't know, I don't think I should really publish those. Um, it's a pity because I've just spent ages getting them ready and everything, um, and I'm really keen to publish them, but I really don't think it would be a good idea to publish that kind of content at this particular time. So that's going to have to wait. I don't know when I'll be able to publish them, when will it be appropriate? When will it, it, you know, is it, when will it be the right time? You know, it's like when a comedian makes a joke about a subject and people still feel a bit touchy about it. Don't get the wrong idea. We're not making fun of the Queen. It's just that the Queen comes up sometimes. I don't know. It's probably fine, to be honest. And if I add a disclaimer at the start to say something like this, you know, I, I don't know what I'll do, but generally I think it's probably best to just keep away from that subject completely. So anyway, those two episodes are going to have to be published much later on. I don't know when. Maybe in a few months. We'll see. And so, I don't know. I think I need to just think carefully about the sort of content that I publish on this podcast over the next few weeks. Most of you don't mind, probably. Most of you don't don't mind. But, I don't know, after having done this for 13 years, I have a sense of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And I think that I need to be a bit careful about what I do. And uh, who knows, maybe I might, there might be a little break. In fact, there might even be a little break where I don't publish anything for a little while. It won't be that long, but there might be a little quiet patch. Um, Or at least if I do publish stuff, I've got to be careful and come up with something that's maybe a bit more serious. And I don't know, we'll see. Um, I think I might record something for my dad. I think we'll do a Rick Thompson report about the end of an era. And maybe he'll sort of bring more specific comments to that whole idea. So I think I'm sure I'm going to do something with my dad. Another thing is this, that actually 
not this weekend, but the weekend after, that's the weekend of the 17th and 18th of September. That's when the, the Queen's funeral, I think, is due to take place. And actually, I am due to be in London that weekend because it's the London Podcast Festival. And I've been invited to take part in a workshop panel. So I will be in London for that. As long as the festival still goes ahead. And if my, you know, t- maybe my tickets will be cancelled or something, I don't know. The, the, organizers of the, of the organizers of the festival might decide it's best to pos- to postpone it. But we'll see. I would be surprised if it gets postponed. Anyway, the point I'm making is that I'm going to be in London during, probably in London during the weekend of the Queen's funeral. So there's a chance I'll be able to attend or at least be nearby, be in Westminster at that time. And who knows, I might be able to even record some little interviews with people or capture the moment somehow. I might do one of those podcasts where I'm out and about. So that might be something I can do. Uh, But I hope you don't mind if there's a few other episodes about this subject in some in some respect before normal podcasting resumes you can let me know again let me know what do you think should this should i be uh, discreet about the type of content i upload do i need to be very careful about it i think i probably do um so i don't know what am i saying i guess i i'm just managing your expectations over the next few weeks Okay, that's the thing I wanted to add in. Let's go back to the recording that I put down uh, an hour or so ago. And that's the end of the episode. Okay, so this is the rest of the recording from earlier. Listeners, um, give me your thoughts, opinions in the comments section as usual. Um, Okay, please forgive my very rambling comments here. Uh, We've been going for... 52 minutes. Time to stop. Thank you for listening. And, uh, well, let's see what the reign of King Charles III will be like. Okay, listeners. Okay. Well, thanks for your thoughts. If you did give me any thoughts, (laughs) some people sent me messages and all the rest of it. And, uh, yeah, I hope the members of the royal family are coping with it okay and all that stuff. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.